Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, the White House has proposed some new charging standards to help states get this $5 billion over the next five years as they build out this nationwide charging network of around 500,000 chargers by 2030. This proposal on minimum standards will help establish the groundwork for states to build charging station projects that are accessible to all drivers regardless of the location, EV brand, or charging company. And these standards will ensure a unified network of chargers with similar payment systems, pricing information, and charging speeds. The rules mandate real-time information on station pricing and location so drivers can better plan their trips, and stations would be required to have a minimum number of types of chargers. Now, we don't have any detail for these type of standards just yet, but it's supposed to be posted sometime next week. This is one of those things, it's awesome in theory, we absolutely need better standards and to make things simple for the average consumer. However, the big question is how is this going to be implemented and what will the standards be? So we'll definitely be watching for this one as this is going to be very important for EV adoption this decade. And I think most of us would agree here in the States, it should be mostly superchargers and CCS. So we'll keep an eye out for this next week. UBS has upgraded Tesla stock to a buy with an unchanged price target of $1,100, saying Tesla's future is brighter than ever. Citing, we believe the operational outlook is stronger than ever before thanks to record high order backlog in two new gigafactories ramping up, margin momentum, after the Q2 dip, auto gross margin should structurally exceed 30%, driven by pricing and product and process innovation, and a structural competitive edge in key supply chains, resulting in superior growth and profitability. Perhaps we should pay a bit more attention to Patrick Hummel from UBS. If you go back roughly one year, his Tesla price target was around $700, pretty much dead on the money for a 12 month price target. Now, his reasoning was off. He cited slower demand for Tesla in China relative to domestic EV brands, not really citing these macro concerns. However, he was accurate with his price target for whatever that's worth. Shout out to Spoken Reviews. I will link his channel below, but he's posting some of the first Austin made model wise with a 4680 structural pack. He did a walk around going over some of the panel gaps that all looked very good in my opinion. And he also charged the pack. So let's have a look at what this charging curve will look like. But remember, this is just one anecdote and I'm pretty confident things are being limited by Tesla to some degree. So this was the 279 mile all wheel drive Model Y from Austin charging at a V3 supercharger. Overall, the charging curve seemed a bit worse than some of the newer 2170 packs. But as I said, we can be pretty sure that Tesla is being overly cautious with the first iteration of this new 4680 pack. The charging curve only stayed over 200 kilowatts for a few seconds and I saw 200 106 kilowatts as the max. This was around 10% state of charge. And that then moved down to 150 kilowatts at 20% state of charge. At 50% SOC, it was charging at 81 kilowatts. And then at 80% state of charge, it was around 50 kilowatts. So overall, it went from a 10% state of charge to 80% in about 35 minutes. And if we fast forward to 90%, you can see it's only delivering about 41 kilowatts. And for some context, if we look at a Model S Plaid charging curve, you can see from about 10% to 30% state of charge, it held that around 250 kilowatt rate. So that is superior to what we just witnessed for this one anecdote of a 4680 charging curve but remember don't put too much stock into this it's just one example and tesla is definitely being overly cautious here in my opinion real quick shout out to lex friedman who turned me on to athletic greens fast forward to today and they're the sponsor of today's video and a genuine staple of my daily routine based on my personal experience over the years i'm fairly confident in saying a majority of people are nutrient deficient to some degree after a few years in the fitness industry i can confidently say ag1 has become my favorite greens drink and i can sip it and enjoy the taste so there's no nose plugging and chugging going on here Every serving of AG1 has 75 vitamins, minerals, and probiotics that when taken consistently can support gut health, energy, immunity, recovery, and focus. It's quick and easy too. One scoop in eight ounces of water and your superfood cocktail is ready to enjoy. AG1 is also independently certified by NSF, so you know you're getting only the highest quality of ingredients. AG1 has offered to provide a year's supply of vitamin D3K2 and five travel packs free of charge with every new purchase if 
you use my link in the description below. So if you want quick and easy support for your health, this is an awesome option. And we have a few updates on Giga Shanghai. First, deliveries and production for May. Tesla delivered 32,165 cars for the month, 22,340 of which were for export, and produced 33,544, which was above expectations. I believe Troy was around 32,000, so exceeding his expectations by around 1,000. And looking at the domestic manufacturers in China, BYD came in at 114,100 for May, Li Auto 11,400, and Xpeng at 10,100. Remember, for these figures in May, Giga Shanghai was that one shift for most of the month. They didn't add that second shift until about halfway through the month. So doing the math, that works out to a monthly daily rate of around 1,038 units per day. However, more importantly, Reuters reported that toward the end of the month, Tesla Shanghai was operating around 2,600 units per day, much closer to its peak rates back in March. And a similar story for exports as Giga Shanghai only resumed export operations on May 11th, so just over half of the month. And here we have a report from CN Stock just confirming that the Shanghai government has been incredibly supportive of Tesla and its operations. In order to help Tesla and other leading companies solve the difficulties encountered in resuming work, the Shanghai municipal government has held several special meetings. Regarding the situation that Tesla has suppliers all over the country, including many overseas, many departments have driven and boosted the supply of key parts and warehousing logistics and use Tesla's resumption of work to drive the coordinated resumption of related industrial chains. And more importantly, they're saying the capacity utilization rate has recovered to 100%, and the delivery is full blood resurrection as soon as possible. I have no idea what that means, but I like how it sounds. So we have the Shanghai government being extra supportive, helping Tesla get back to full production. We have Reuters reporting that at the end of May, Tesla was producing around 2,600 units per day. And we have other reports citing that Giga Shanghai is back to 100% of capacity. Plus, a different report citing Tesla is aiming to make more than 71,000 vehicles at its Shanghai plant in June. Now, the most vehicles Tesla has ever sold from Giga Shanghai was December of last year, 70,800. And this data is from an internal memo that said Tesla aims to produce 17,000 cars a week from June 13th, which is also when it plans to end the closed loop system. Doing some math, 17,000 cars a week over a 31 day month would be a hypothetical run rate of 75,200 units per month. So yes, things are lining up for Tesla to have a record month in June. Shanghai could be back to its highest level, Fremont should be operating at max capacity, and you'll have Berlin and Austin producing the most they have to date. However, we still need to keep our expectations for quarter two in check. Tesla apparently had an all-hands meeting last night and Electric is reporting on some things that Elon said. He said this has been a challenge since late 2008, speaking of the end of quarter delivery push. There always seems to be something that happens and causes the end of the quarter to be nutty and this quarter will not be an exception. Mostly because we had this huge challenge with the COVID restrictions in Shanghai, basically shut down the factory for much of the early part of the quarter. It's only now getting back to full production. It will be pretty intense this quarter. There is some confusion right now though because Electric said at the and he, Elon, hinted that Tesla could possibly still deliver close to 300,000 vehicles. Now, did he say that last night or was it from the Q1 call where we know that he said that? Going back to the Q1 call, this is what Elon actually said. Notwithstanding new issues that arise, I think we will see a record output per week from Giga Shanghai this quarter, albeit we are missing a couple weeks, speaking of quarter two. So that means most likely vehicle production in quarter two will be similar to quarter one, maybe slightly lower. Remember quarter one was around 310,000. He said, but it's also possible we may pull a rabbit out of the hat and be slightly higher, but it's roughly on par with quarter one. However, that was weeks ago. So unless Elon had doubled down and reiterated on that last night, which we don't know for sure, Personally, I would have my expectations closer to where Troy Teslike is around 250,000 for quarter two. So be careful with all of this. And more on Shanghai from the Straight Times. Tesla was proceeding with an online hiring event in China on Thursday and added two dozen new job postings for the country. Tesla will recruit staff for smart manufacturing roles. 
Tesla has 224 current openings in China for managers and engineers, according to a separate post, 24 of which were newly posted on June 9th. So it looks like Giga Shanghai is still hiring and possibly even some manager type positions that may be salaried. And here we have Electric reporting from that meeting last night, but this is Elon talking about master plan part three. Elon apparently said it's all about achieving very large scale. In order to shift the entire energy infrastructure and transport infrastructure of Earth, there has to be a very large high scale. We have to ask what is the actual tonnage? If we work backward from let's say 300 terawatt hours of installed capacity in vehicles and stationary packs, how do you achieve that tonnage from a mining and refining standpoint, but also do so in a sustainable way? In summary, how do you get to enough scale to actually shift the entire energy infrastructure of Earth? Pretty huge ambitions and part of why I love being an investor in Tesla. So master plan part three seems to be all about massive scale mining and refining. Tesla owners Australia Facebook group originally shared these photos showing the first showroom demo Model Y being transported in Australia. Hopefully orders opening for Australia and New Zealand soon. And here is the image. So to all of you out there, be patient. Rob reported on this last night, but in case you missed it, this is a huge deal. So just real quick, Tesla and Samsung, a new deal around maybe $4 billion for new cameras. This deal is set to be for all Tesla models. Samsung will be supplying around 80% of the cameras with LG making up the other 20%. Mass production should start as early as July, so maybe this is going to be an upgrade for Hardware 4. And this next generation of cameras should have four to five times the amount of pixels that Tesla's been working with, so better clarity. There are some rumblings that EV tax credits may be back on the table. However, to me, this feels like a bit of hopium, so I wouldn't get too carried away. But Haley Stevens said there's a lot of promise with EV tax credits, and I believe it's still on the table, but Manchin and others are still staunchly opposed. Here we have Nitza upgrading its probe into Tesla, looking at autopilot, now taking a look at 830,000 Tesla vehicles. This is an engineering analysis like the next level up, what they would have to do before a full recall. However, doing a bit of research, this step could take up to a year. It's a more detailed analysis, so we might not have any results anytime soon. At the same time, we have the chair of the Federal Trade Commission saying concerns raised by lawmakers about Tesla are on their radar. It's absolutely true that, you know, this is an issue on which many members of Congress have focused and written to us about. This probe is in response to those Tesla crashes that involved emergency responder vehicles. So it goes step one, preliminary investigation. Step two would be upgraded to an engineering analysis, what NHTSA is now doing in this case. And then the third step would be a full on recall. And look, NHTSA is not perfect and this may be an unpopular opinion, but generally speaking, I think this is a good thing. Look in there, see what Tesla's doing, help the regulators understand Tesla's technology. And if there is actually something wrong, then we all should be aware of it, especially Tesla owners. Now, sure, it's a bit distracting. There's a ton of misreporting and Tesla is under a microscope, maybe a bit unfairly, but overall, I think this is a good and healthy thing in the long run. And I'll leave you guys today with some 4680 beauty as Tesla is seemingly still recruiting for battery cell production and development in Germany, China, and the United States. Don't forget, check out AG1 linked below. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.